Today I'm going to show you how I made this circuit board badge for this year's Hudson Alpha Tech Challenge. For more information on the Biotechnology Hackathon, check out the link in the description. Teams can win up to $5,000. Let's start off by taking a look at the electrical schematic. I use Autodesk Eagle. A schematic is where we set everything up and let the software know which components should be connected to each other. First, let's visit the power section. We have a 2032 coin cell battery holder that is connected to ground and the positive 3.3 volt bus. Next, we have an on-off switch to distribute the positive voltage to the VCC bus, which will power all of the components. Then we visit the brains of the operation. I'm using a 555 timer and a 4017 decade counter in order to cycle through the LEDs. I used another switch to cycle between capacitors for the 555 timer. This allows the user to select a slow or fast speed for the LED flashing sequence. The values of the resistors and capacitors connected to the 555 timer determine the speed of the LEDs, how long they turn on, off, and the delay in between. And finally, we have our LEDs and their resistors. Since there are 10 outputs from the decade counter, I've wired up one LED per output. Now let's take a look at the board diagram. This step is necessary if the PCBs are being manufactured. Red represents the top copper layer, blue is the bottom copper layer, white is the silk screen, and the semi-white layer is the stop mask. While designing the board, I can use Eagle to see what the PCB would look like in real life using the engineering feature. We want the board to be blue because Hudson Alpha's main color is blue. I say it looks pretty good because we're looking at a finished design already, but if there was something that didn't look right, this could be a good time to fix up cosmetic or electrical issues before placing my order with the PCB house. Speaking of which, I order my PCBs from JLCPCB.com. Although this video is not sponsored by them, I'll be reaching out to them after this video to see if they would like to be. They offer a quick turnaround and awesome prices. I'm really happy how these turned out. What do you think? The type of surface finishing I used was hot air surface leveling with lead because it's the cheapest. And that's also why the copper looks silver. The silk screen is pretty on point. Everything here looks great. By the way, if you want to download the files I used to make this badge, check out the GitHub link in my description. Alright, now that we have our PCBs, let's gather the parts needed to make this badge come to life. Here are the components I'm using, which are also listed in the description. First, we have resistors with values of 22 kilo ohms and 100 ohms. Capacitors, 22 microfarad and 4.7 microfarad. Toggle switches for power and setting the speed mode. LEDs, and I'm using four different colors, 555 timer, 4017 decade counter, and the battery holder. After I've gathered all my parts, I like to print out an outline of my PCB to stage the parts before I place them on the PCB for soldering. I tape the design on my desk and then use large transfer tape to cover it with a sticky surface. Next, I grab some tweezers. I like using the auto clamping kind for moving small components around because they're harder to drop. The first component I'm grabbing is the battery holder and taking a look at the PCB to figure out which side is negative and which side is positive. I see that the ground connection on the PCB is on the upper side, so that's how I'll place it on the tape. Then I grab a decade counter, next a 555 timer, 4.7 microfarad capacitor, 22 microfarad capacitor, 22 kilo ohm resistors, then 10 100 ohm resistors, toggle switches, red LEDs, orange LEDs, yellow LEDs, and green LEDs. All right, now it's time to set up the PCB for applying the solder paste. I create a jig out of old PCBs, line everything up, and then tape them down. Next, I get my PCB stencil, which I also ordered from JLC PCB. This is the first time I'm using it, so I'm gonna have to remove the plastic. Stencils are not necessary for depositing solder paste, but it takes way less time and is way more accurate than doing it just by hand. There's probably a better way to design my stencil and PCB in order to line them up together, but I just use my eyeballs and line up the pads. Then I tape the stencil onto the jig, and we have our template ready to go. This template process is pretty awesome if you're doing multiple PCBs, because you can remove the first one and then insert the next one and repeat. Before I apply the solder paste, I like to clean the stencil and PCB with denatured alcohol. I'm using a microfiber cloth, but I feel like there's a better material out there. What do other people use? I'm using No Clean Solder Paste from MG Chemicals, and I'm pretty happy with it. I squeeze some onto the stencil around the holes. Then I grab a plastic card to act as the squeegee. I press down and attempt to apply an even stroke down the stencil. 
The solder paste should be somewhat evenly deposited onto the PCB through the stencil. I have some leftover solder paste and I'll save this for later in case I need some more. Next we lift up the stencil and take a look at the solder paste. It looks decent. Remember that the solder paste will wick up during the melting process. Alright, now it's time to place the components onto the PCB. Sometimes it's difficult to determine the polarity on components. For LEDs, there is usually a green mark on the top or bottom. On the bottom, the mark looks like a T, and the bottom of the T points towards the ground pole of the LED. Sometimes the LED also has a green mark on the top side, which denotes the ground side. The integrated circuits are lined up using the small dot on top of the chip. These resistors do not have a polarity. And now all the components are placed. The next step is to melt the solder. I use a toaster oven because it is super easy. I use the convection bake mode and set the temperature to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a Cuisinart TOB165. I carefully place the PCB onto the baking sheet and insert it into the oven. It is very important to be careful when doing this. If you bump the board, the components can move off of their current location. Then I close the oven and set a timer for 5 minutes. This is a time lapse, but watch the solder melt and soak up into the pads. It is so satisfying to watch. Alright, timer is done. I open the oven and slide out the tray to start cooling it down. I take a look at the components. This is the best time to fix component placement if something got messed up because the solder is still hot. But this time everything looks great. I let it cool down for 10 minutes or so and take another look at the components to make sure everything is good. Alright, time to give this thing some juice. I insert a 2032 coin cell battery, turn off the light for demonstration purposes, and power on the badge. Yay, it looks like all the LEDs work. Next I switch the speed mode to slow to test that out. Sweet! Works as intended. I made a similar badge for last year's tech challenge. This year's model only has a couple differences. The main difference is that I used surface mount switches this year rather than through hole. The rest of the changes are purely cosmetic. What do you all think? Is there something I can improve in my process to increase efficiency or productivity? And let me know some of your soldering tips and soldering pains as well. And subscribe in order to watch some more nerdy projects.